Jonas here, back to do another recent vinyl finds, and yes, I know I've been doing a lot of these, uh, but I've just managed to to buy so much stuff recently and and listen to them, you know. Um, so you are probably gonna see like one th this kind of video once a week now. I'm trying to slow down on the buying. Really, uh, I have so much to listen to. So so yeah. Um, so first of all, I went to Gothenburg to see um, Onet Coleman. But he um, uh, cancelled, unfortunately, and Anders from Stockholm went there too to see him. Uh, and But we ended up meeting and record shopping and just hang out, drank some beers. Um, he sold his ticket and got the money back. So, you know, everything's fine and we had a great day. Anders is, like, probably the most interesting guy uh, I've met uh, talking about records, you know. He has such great knowledge, and and it's just it's just so fun talking with Anders about records and and you know especially jazz, but uh, a lot of different genres too. It's just a killer guy. So thank you, Anders. And some of these are uh, finds that I found in Gothenburg, with some other stuff. First off, playing in the background, I'm gonna try to go a little bit faster on these. Uh, this is Peter Brynjelsson, uh, Vaya, on Slask Records, uh, playing in the background uh, from 1990. Now, Peter Brynjelsson was a member of Ragnar Rök, uh, an 80s progressive um, band in Sweden. Uh, I think they're kind of famous, I don't know if Chris or Derek has something with Ragnar Rök. But they are really, really good, and Peter Brynjolfsson also tutored me in, in um, film uh, music studies when I went to, to uh, uh, I don't know what it's called, college or high school or, or university, university. So yeah, this one I got in Gothenburg, I don't think I've shown this yet. This is Pug, uh, Pug Rogerfeld's first debut album. Anders found this, but you know, gave it to me. Uh, it's called Ja de Erde, and you all know me now, uh, I'm a huge fan of the early Pug Rogerfeld stuff, uh, Ask Big Star. This is his first one, I think uh, this is a second press, it has the lyric sheet, uh, you know, tagged in here, uh, or sta stapled in here, and you have the ordinary two other guys here, you have um, Joey Vardenius from Made in Sweden, and also who did uh, Godot Godot. And uh, Janne Karlsson on drums, who was in uh, Hansen and Karlsson. This is a monster record. If you find it, get it. I'm gonna try to find more copies of this uh, to, you know, trade with the BC. Awesome record. Next one. Next one, this I also found in Gothenburg. You know, I found this for five bucks. And I just took a chance, I loved the cover, and Anders asked me what it was, I listened to it a little bit in, in, in the store, I had no idea, it sounded pretty awesome, and it actually sounded like a southern rock band at first, you know, you know, 10 seconds of it. So I just bought it, and I came home and I did a research. Now, this is, first of all, on uh, BASF Records, and I think it, it's a German label, I'm not sure, I'm not sure, but this is Cartago. This is Cartago, and it's a German kraut progressive band. Very, very rare. Now, this is like a six-fold, not a tri-fold or something like that. It has like edges here, it folds up, it reveals the eye and some other psychedelic funky stuff. Uh, this is from 1971. And the original on BASF records is very, very rare now. This is an original, but it's a damaged copy. And I've seen this sold on Pop Psych in this condition, you know, it's mint condition. But in this condition, without the original cover, in this condition, for, for 100 euros. It also got me for, for like 30 euros and stuff like that. But I bought, bought this for 5 bucks and it's amazing. It's a monster of prog uh, record, really, really good. Uh, not like super progressive, it's a little more heavy, but but yeah. This was like a you know a grail for me. This is not an original, nothing like that. I saw Seek show this, uh, but I've been looking for this since I saw the Rolling Stone, Stones top 500 records you have to hear before you die, or whatever it's called, you know. But this was in there, it sparked my interest. I've done the research a long, long time ago, and I've looked for this record for so long. I've listened to it, to it digitally, and 
In the wheels, We Small Hours by Frank Sinatra, his Blood on the Tracks, you know, the divorce, the depress, uh, depressive record of uh, um, Frank Sinatra. This is from 1955, but it's a you know reissue in the 80s, something like that. Sounded really good, and I got this in the same crate as the Cartago record for five bucks, four or five bucks, something like that. Now this was a free record. I got this from a friend. Uh, this is Sly and the Family Stone with Fresh, uh, their like, I don't know, middle part release, something like that. It's good, it's funky, uh, and it's good, and it's the first Sly and the Family Stone I have, and I'm still looking for Stand and the other stuff, you know. I found this for like 10 bucks. This is, oh, I'll maybe, maybe I'll show it like this. Uh, this is Dave Mason. Now, Dave Mason was a member of Traffic, and I've seen this, I don't know if it was... Um, it's a quite flame that showed this, or but when I saw it for ten bucks, I just thought like I have to have this because it just sparked something in me. By the BC, you know, uh, this is a good record. Now I opened it up, and it revealed this at first. Blue thumb, baby. Blue thumb. Uh, so you know, it's a quite flame with the blue thumb uh, thing. So I asked the guy, can I play it to see if it's like in good condition or whatever? And he said yes, so I opened it up and you know, everyone that has this knows about this. This is from 1970 or 71, 70, 1970 and they made this marble kick-ass fucking gorgeous vinyl in 1970. Sounds perfect, has some background noise, but look at the cover here. You know, for 10 bucks. I was on this like a mother, uh, really good, has some good, you know, uh, Derek and the Dominoes players like Jim Keltner, Leon, uh, Leon Russell, uh, Jim Gordon, uh, Delaney and Bonnie, you know, all those good uh, good guys that played back with uh, in the day with Derek Clapton and the other guys. Uh, so, I don't know if I can do this, fuck that, okay. Uh, played this, this didn't give me anything, just, you know, a sappy um, American record. Spanky and our gang live, uh, you know, I played like the first side maybe uh, on Mercury Records. This is going in a crate that I'm going with to an auction house. Um, bought this on Tradera uh, for like six bucks maybe. Uh, the dealer with Chico, Ham uh, Chico Hamilton uh, introducing Lord, uh, Larry Coriel. Now this is on Impulse, so I was just, uh, I was glad getting an Impulse record with this like age uh, gatefold for 7 bucks or 6 bucks or whatever I paid for it. Something like that, 5 bucks maybe. Um, and you know, introducing uh, Lord, uh, Larry Coriel, that was awesome. Now I don't know, I talked with Anders, we talked like one minute about this uh, record. Um, so this is like older, later Impulse, later Impulse uh, releases on the green label. I don't know if this is on, I haven't done the research on that, if this is an original, if they released it at that time period, or if this is a re-release. But it was, on a re it was a really, really good, um, good record. I enjoyed it very, very much. Kick-ass cover, you know the cover. And Larry Coriel, Coriel plays a little bit like John McLaughlin on some parts of the, the album, so that was cool. Yeah, I got this for one buck, you know. One buck, U2, The Unforgettable Fire, in near mint condition, everything's intact, you know. Uh, all good, one buck. I couldn't resist that. Now, this is also a prog uh, classic in Swedish music. Uh, band stuff with Nadim Lettar, When the Fog... Uh, turns away or something, you know. And and there's a very famous song uh, called Family Lycka, Family Joy or Family, uh, everything's fine, fine in the family, you know, something like that. Um, that played on, on Swedish radio over and over again in 1970 uh, on Metronome Records. Looks like this. It won a, a reward in, in Sweden now. The, the people on here playing, and this is a sappy record, you know, every other song on this is bad, really bad in my opinion, but there were some great songs, uh, but uh, there's a bunch of good guys playing here. Uh, we have uh, Kenny Håkansson from, from um, Kevin Kajse uh, playing on it, Lasse Villander, he's also pretty famous, and Joey Vadim is from Made in Sweden, so they play on it, you know, it's the same people all over again, but 
if they are playing, you know that there's some kind of, you know, interesting musicality to it in that time period. They were... I get a feeling that they were very hungry showing off what they could do, you know, and then later produced great records with great bands and stuff like that. Now, uh, I don't know if you saw the Seek uh, VC Love Train video uh, that, I, uh, that I did, but these are the ones that I've been listening to. Um, this, this is Buffalo Springfield. Um, and as I looked it up, it's a second press. Uh, I'm super happy about this. It sounded perfect, and it has the song for what it's worth on it. And that's really the song that I know, you know, the most. That we everyone, everyone knows the most. Um, and it's not on the original, so I'm very happy that it was a, a second press. And it sounded great. Great, great, clean copy. Really happy. Played this just after Neil Young's first record. Same that. Yes. Uh, same story, you know, super clean, sounded great, and it's the second issue, the first one didn't have the Neil Young here, it was just a picture all over, so the, the second press, uh, very happy about this, uh, that too, I didn't know that the first press only had, you know, a picture, not the name, so I thought it was the first press. Played this the other day, I think I bought this for six bucks or something like that, this is Pete Pat Metheny group, uh, off-ramp, one of his uh, more known records, I think. Uh, uh, you know, a common ECM kind of sounding record. Always good, uh, not always, but, but mostly good. High quality, uh, sound quality. Uh, and I enjoyed this very much. 1982 this was released. And as with many ECM records, a killer cover. Uh, now this was a monster. This is almost like I've only listened to this once, and it's a eight or a nine, but it may climb to a ten. I love this record, and this is Jacopo Pastorius' second release on his own name, Word of Mouth, from 1981. This has the elite of jazz, you know, famous at least famous jazz musicians, popular jazz musicians from that time, and it doesn't even say which ones are playing on this. It has a nice, uh, it's just black on the other side, but it has a nice photo in there in his sleeve there. Word of mouth. Now, this is like orchestral, climatic, funky fusion jazz record. It has a cover of Blackbird by Beatles and do a fantastic job on that, but there's not a, a single song on here that is bad. It's really, really, really good. Uh, and I'm so happy I got that for like six bucks, five, five, six bucks, something like that. Uh, and you just took a chance on it. I also played this, um, I, I got this from Seek as well. Enjoyed the hell out of this, really, really cool. Rhinoceros, Rhinoceros, I think it's pronounced, uh, on Electra. I think this is the second press as well. And, and unfortunately, the, the blade sleeve was torn when I got it, so I replaced it with my own. Um, but you know, I have several others with, uh, from Seek with fine blade sleeves like this. Savoy Brown's uh, Hellbound uh, Train. And this was really, really good. I enjoyed the hell out of this, especially the song Hellbound Train. Uh, longer, I think it's eight minutes or nine minutes long. Uh, they really stretch out on that song. And, and I read some reviews about it that that symbolized more uh, what they sounded like before. So I'm really on the hunt for earlier Savoy Brown records. Easy to listen, high quality musicians, really good. Now I cleaned this, I've had this for a while. Pink Floyd's, um, I don't even know what it's called. A Momentary Lapse of Reason has learning to fly on it. Other than that, it's just a so-so album, but you know, bought it many, many years ago. And I bought this on Swedish eBay. I paid like 20 bucks for this, I think, somewhere around that area with shipping. Um, and I talked with Anders today on the phone or SMS about this. This is John Sorn's Spy vs. Spam, uh, Spy. I saw this in a, in a shop in Stockholm and I didn't buy it for approximately that amount and I think that was a good price uh, then uh, it's, it's gone for way way more it's a German press uh, and it was a monster of a jazz free jazz record and I think that's what we can manage today uh, 15 minutes so hope you enjoy that uh, as much as I do making them and